Debbie Marcou is licensed by the Department of Business Oversight under the California Residential Mortgage Lender Act, NMLS ID 237926. Also licensed in Arizona, 0941504, Florida, 76508, Georgia, 69178, Illinois, 031.0058339, Nevada, 57237, Oregon, Tennessee, 184373, Texas, Washington, 237926. Heidi Cycle Points, DBO, 1666881, Arizona, 101648. She's a mortgage mom. She can get things done. When you're in need and don't know where to go, pick up the phone and call mom. Hi, welcome to Mortgage Mom Radio. I'm Debbie Marcoux, and we are going to be going over our second unit of our Homebuyer Workshop 2021. Today, we're going to be talking about the benefits and responsibilities of homeownership. Now, if you find that these workshops are good for you, they're educational, you really enjoy them, please make sure that you hit that like button on the video and you subscribe to my channel. Also turn on the notification button, you gotta click that bell and then you've gotta hit it a second time and select all. I'm gonna be bringing these workshops to you every single week uh, for probably about the next 10 weeks. So we're gonna try to um, put them into small pieces that you can take in and absorb. But if you wanna know when the next one is uploaded, you gotta make sure that you uh, subscribe to the channel and that you hit that notification button. So let's go ahead, let's jump in, let's get started. And this is uh, unit number two, home buyer workshop, benefits of homeownership and responsibilities. You know, it's, it's with, ben, you know, with the benefit does come the responsibility. So we're gonna go through those pieces. Couple of things that I wanna talk about for you today before we get there. And let's see if we can make this thing work today. All right, so. Um, the first thing I want you guys to know is as you're out there and you're looking at homes, you're walking through a property with a real estate agent, or you're just window shopping on your Redfin or Zillow, realtor.com, is you're probably going to want to know, well, what does this house cost me? Well, the easiest way to figure that out is to download our phone app. So text the word mom to 36260, and you'll be able to use all of the tools that are in my app. They're fantastic. You can run your payments by putting in all of the different information, sales price, down payment, taxes, homeowners insurance. If you don't know what to do, you can click that button in the app that says email me and you can ask me the question, hey, Debbie, I'm looking at a property for 500,000. Can you tell me what would this cost me or what numbers should I use? And I'm gonna get those back to you. You wanna watch YouTube? click on the button. You guys want to uh, listen to the show or listen to the podcast? We do put this up on podcast as well. Click on the button. <laughs> so it's really very simple. Lots of information in here, tons of information tools. So make sure you have it. Again, text the word mom to 36260 and you'll get uh, an e or a text message from me with a link. All you've got to do is click on the link, save it to your home screen, and now you've got this valuable tool right at your fingertips. So let's go on to the next thing. How do you contact us? Because I'm sure you guys are learning how to buy a house right now. I'm giving you all kinds of educational advice, but maybe you want to get on my calendar. You want to talk with me one-on-one. -on -one. That's really easy to do. You can call the office. Again, you can do that right from the phone app or the telephone number is 844-935-3634. You can follow us right here on YouTube. You can put questions into any of the, um, make a comment on any of the videos and we're gonna see that comment. We can always get back to you. Go to the website. It's mortgagemomradio.com. You can send me a message right through the website as well. So tons of ways to get a hold of me. As long as you search, Google search, Mortgage Mom Radio, our information's gonna come up. But here we go. What are your benefits of homeownership? Let's just jump right into it. So on the screen, you're gonna see that I actually have uh, your 1098 form. What is that? Well, this is what you're going to get back from the bank at the end of the year. The most important piece is the tax savings in homeownership. So all of the interest and all of the property taxes that you pay on an annual basis, you get to write off from your uh, gross income, you know, the, the income that you have to file on your tax return. This is going to reduce the amount of taxes that you owe. So in essence, let's say that your normal refund is maybe a couple thousand dollars. Maybe you usually owe money. Well, now that you own a property and you've got this deduction, maybe you're going to get a larger return, which should be the case. Or maybe you're not going to owe as much money. 
which should be the case. So this is going to be a really big piece of the puzzle for you as far as why should you own a home? And we're going to go a little bit into that a little bit later because I've got people that have asked me questions that I think are very beneficial for you to hear the scenario to try to understand. But at the end of the day, let's say that your uh, refund goes up by $4,000 or $5,000. Take that money, divide by 12, and that monthly amount would be what you could put towards your mortgage payment to get to a little bit higher price home. You're kind of subsidizing yourself and you're, you're, you're able to pay more than what you can in rent to own your home. So something that we can definitely talk about one-on-one, -on -one. if you want to give me a call, get on my calendar, we can definitely go through those together. I can give you numbers that you can go back to your CPA or your tax advisor, and they can run that scenario for you and show you how your tax return would change by owning a home. So something to definitely keep in mind, one of the largest um, pieces of the puzzle are benefits of homeownership. So you can see on here that I have build wealth. Well, Yes, you are building wealth. Uh, just, you know, as you've seen in recent days and recent years, you know, property values increase. They go up in value. And even if we end up in a down market and property values drop, there is always that cyclical cycle where we go up and we come down. And when we go up again, we always surpass where we stopped the time before. So over time, and I've said this many times in the show, real estate is for the long haul. It is not a short-term investment. Sure, you could be a contractor. You could be purchasing a property that's in horrible shape. You could be fixing it up and you could be turning it around and flipping it. That does happen, absolutely, but that's more of an investment thing. This is a home buyer workshop for a first-time buyer. So what you have to remember is that over time, over the long haul, you are definitely building wealth by owning your home. You are building equity in the property. This is one of the pieces of many puzzles that you're going to put together in your retirement portfolio. You could eventually end up with this home having tons of equity. You could sell it and that could be part of your retirement plan. You could rent it out and you're going to be able to rent it for significantly more than what your monthly payment is at that point in time. You could uh, turn it around and do a reverse mortgage where you are not making a payment but living in the property. There are lots of ways to look at real estate as building wealth and that is something that definitely talking with a financial advisor to determine how it's going to fit in to your portfolio is a great opportunity and a great option, um, but keep that in the back of your mind. You are definitely building wealth by owning real estate. Now I have on here security. Why do I have security? Well, if, if you've ever rented a home before, and I'm sure if you don't own a property right now, you probably do unless you're one of those very fortunate few that get to live in your parents' basement or you know live with them for a very long time and not have to pay rent. But most of us have to move out and pay rent before we actually buy a house. Your landlord can issue you a notice to move, to vacate at any point in time. What if you're a family with little kids and you've got those kids at a particular elementary school and you don't want to leave, but now you've got this notice to vacate. Now you've got to try to find another property that might be for rent in your exact neighborhood to keep those kids in that school. Or, you know, maybe you're not in a financial position that you could move. You're, you're making it, you're making it day by day, you're paying the rent, but you don't have a ton of extra money in the bank to go and rent another property and put down another security deposit. So it, this is building you security. You don't have to move unless you choose to move. Nobody can tell you that you need to vacate. Obviously, we're going to get into, you know, what are your responsibilities of homeownership and you could be foreclosed on if you don't make your payment. But if you continue to make your payment, nobody can tell you to leave. So that is the security of homeownership. The pride of ownership is the next piece on this slide. Pride of ownership is where you get to do what you want to this property redo your landscape, plant your garden, paint your walls, redo your flooring. These are all things that you get to do to your taste. And it's not something that you would really want to do to a rental property. You know, you, you don't want to improve somebody else's home. You don't want to improve somebody else's um, wealth or future or financial future, their retirement plan. 
But when it's yours, you can go in there and you can put in the blood, sweat, and tears. You can paint your own walls and do it at your own time and at your own leisure. And you can go out and plant some flowers in that garden a little bit at a time. But it is your home and it is a pride that you will um, feel just by owning that property. So I like to put that in there because, you know, I don't know about you, but I I rented properties way back in the day and I hated the carpet on the floor or um, something needed to be replaced, but the landlord wasn't going to do it. Or, uh, you know, the, the garage door that broke and they put in a new one, but it's not insulated. So now my garage is hot. Uh, These are all things that you get to make those decisions and do it on your own time, but improve your property and be very um, prideful about it. So something good to keep in mind. Now, build good credit. This is another thing. If you continue to make those mortgage payments on time, you will see your credit improve. When you have a mortgage loan on your credit report, lenders are going to favor you more than somebody that doesn't. So a great example, we all know from listening to my show over and over again, I'm a big RVer. I love to go camping and I had to buy that RV. And it actually took me three years of savings to finally be able to pull that trigger on my own. But now... Now, you know, if you own a home and you go to apply for an RV loan, it's a much simpler process to get that loan approved than it is if you don't. Lenders are looking for people that have consistency, making payments, that they're homeowners, they've got something to fall back on should times get tough. They could sell that home, they could take that equity. It's security for lenders. So you will find that your credit score will improve a bit. You will find that you're gonna have a better opportunity at some better credit cards. And and just overall, in general, you're gonna have better options available to you when you are a homeowner. So these are really important things to keep in mind. These are the benefits of homeownership. Why should you buy a home and why, you know, should you, you know, at least get that plan put together to be able to buy that property. Now, the, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, I wanted to kind of give a story that I hope will help resonate or, or come to play, especially in today's market, because Property values are high right now. And people are thinking, should I buy? Should I wait? You know, are the property values going to drop? Okay. So I had a client in December of 2020 that reached out and she was very on the fence. She really, really wanted to buy, but she was scared. And quite honestly, I could understand why she was scared. The last house that she purchased was in 2008, and she bought at the absolute tip top of the market before everything came crashing down. She did sell that property. She took a loss and she walked away. And now she's coming back December of 2020. Again, same idea. We're at the top of the market, at least we think, Um, you know, our property value is going to drop. Should she just hold tight and should she wait a little bit longer? And what I told her, and I hope again that this really helps you guys and you can kind of think about this in a way that it makes sense. She sold that property in 2009. Had she kept that home, sure, property values dropped. She was upside down. She owed more on it than what it was worth. But from 2009 to 2020, which is 11 years She didn't have the property tax deduction. She didn't have the mortgage interest deduction. She wasn't making payments on a loan towards that house. All of a sudden in 2010 is when we got our HARP refinances that came out, allowed people to refinance, drop their interest rates, even if their property values were upside down. So she would have had an opportunity to drop the interest rate and refinance the home into a cheaper payment. Not only that, but she could afford the house at the time. So you know, the loss that she took when she sold it, maybe she shouldn't have, but she would have missed out on 11 years of write-offs in her income taxes. That is a lot, a lot of money. Not only that, she owned the house, she had her ownership, she could have done what she wanted, she wouldn't have been moving around from rental to rental. And on top of that, even further, think about where would her mortgage loan have been in 11 years from when she gave up? 11 years. She would have paid that mortgage balance down significantly. She would have owed a ton less money on that home today. She would have had all of those tax deductions that she gave up. Now, you go back to today and what is that home worth today? Well, it's worth more than what she sold it for 
when she did. And it's worth more than what she bought it for when she did. So again, please keep this in mind. Let it resonate. Property values go up, property values come down. But when they go back up again, they will always surpass where they left off. Owning a home, no matter when you buy, is never a bad idea, ever. There is never a bad time to buy. There is just a bad time to sell. So please keep that in mind. This is my story of the day. If you have any questions, please reach out. I'm more than happy to answer them for you. You want to get on my calendar. You want to talk to me direct. I am here. I'm a real person. I'm doing this for a living. So call the office. It's 844-935-3634. If you're enjoying this information, like I said at the beginning, if you feel like this is educational, it's getting you pumped up and ready to go, thinking you might want to get that game plan put into place, please hit the like button on this video. It really, really does help me out a lot. And if you want to make sure that you get next week's episode, make sure you subscribe to our channel and you click that bell button so that you know when we've uploaded the next uh, unit number three. Now you got to hit that bell button twice because you've got to select all. That way you know when we go live every Wednesday, we're live at five doing our show live that airs on radio on Saturday. And then you'll also know when we upload the next video. Okay. So going on to our next slide, the um, let's see, Matt, I can't get it going for some reason. Maybe you can move oh, it for me. Oh, I guess because I clicked. <laughs> All right, there we go. Um, so responsibilities of homeownership, and this is very, very important, important, and I did put hashtag adulting. Um, so basically, you know, you've got your responsibilities, which is your property taxes. Those do have to be paid. Even if you make your mortgage payment, if your property taxes are not part of your loan and you are responsible to pay those on your own, if you do not make your property tax payment, you could lose your house. The county can come in and take your house from you. So please make sure that you are responsible. You're getting into a home that you can afford. If you can afford a monthly payment that includes the taxes and the insurance and HOA dues if you have them, and we'll talk about those in a minute. Um, but if, if you can afford the entire ball of wax all into one payment, then, then you know that you're getting into a home that you can afford. If you need to make the taxes and insurance a separate part of your payment to afford the property, you're going to have a really, really hard time paying that tax bill when it comes due you know, twice a year. So uh, just keep that in mind. Make sure that you are budgeting for a price and for a payment that you know is going to be comfortable for you to make. Um, your insurance, you know, let's say you own the home and you let the insurance policy lapse. Again, if it's part of your mortgage payment, the bank is going to make these payments for you and you're not going to have to be concerned about policies lapsing or forgetting to have made the payment or not having the money to make the payment. But if you choose to pay those separately on your own, if you do not renew your insurance policy and it could just be an oversight and your property burns down you have no insurance to rebuild. So that is one of the responsibilities of homeownership. Make sure you keep your taxes and your insurance paid, always on time, never late, never lapse in coverage, or you really could be in, in serious trouble should something happen. And remember that that homeowner's insurance is not just for fire. If somebody was to slip and fall on your property, it's gonna cover you for that. If uh, there was a major water leak, pipes bust and break and just destroy all kinds of things on the inside of the home, it's gonna cover that. So anything really emergency that homeowner's insurance is going to cover, you absolutely do not want to let that go. So again, responsibility of homeownership. Repairs and maintenance. If you rent right now and something breaks, what do you do? You call your landlord. Hey, dishwasher stopped working. Hey, washer and dryer stopped working. Refrigerator broke. Uh, pipe broke. It's leaking. It is raining in my living room. These are things that you would call your landlord and your landlord would come out and fix for you as a tenant. Now you own the home. You are responsible for all of those repairs and making sure that everything is working or you don't have anything. So one of the things to keep in mind, again, it comes down to the adulting, to the budgeting when deciding what should I buy? What can I afford? You need to make sure that you've got enough extra that you can put a little bit away every single month so that should something happen, you've got that money to go to, to repair it. 
Your hot water heater could go out. You might need to replace some electrical. You just don't know what it could be. Your roof might need some fixing. You All of a sudden, it's a big rainstorm and you've got a leak. And you usually don't know. Everything's fantastic until that rainstorm. So just keep that in mind. You do need to make sure that you're responsible for your home. You're maintaining it. You're keeping up on the repairs. And that is going to be a little bit of extra money that you need to make sure that you set aside. So budgeting, budgeting, budgeting is really the biggest part of the responsibility of homeownership. And it's something that we need to make sure that we're looking at and we're taking into account when deciding what sales price to put you into and what monthly payment is going to be comfortable for you. So last but not least are your HOA dues. If you buy a home that has a homeowners association or you uh, look, are looking at condos or townhomes, those are going to have homeowners associations as well. If you do not make your association payment, they can lien your home and ultimately they could foreclose. So you do need to make sure again that you're keeping up on those homeowners association fees, that you're paying those every single month when they're due. Don't get behind on them. Once you're behind, it's harder to catch up, trust me. And, you know, just make sure that, again, that it's part of your overall budget. So um, I think that we've done a pretty good job at hitting on all of the benefits and responsibilities of homeownership. If you budget right, you get into the home that you can afford, then uh, there is an absolute benefit to homeownership. And if you don't own a home, no matter where the market is at, you should be working on a plan. You should have a game plan in place. You should know what you need to do. You should know how much money that you need. You should know where your credit score should be. And you should be ready to pull the trigger once you get to that step. How do you know if you're ready? Well, you have to call me and you have to talk to me. We've got to go through you. You might find out that you're ready today. And you might find out that you've got some work to do, either saving or credit, you know, whatever that it might be, income. Hey, self-employed borrowers, uh, maybe we need to claim a little bit of that money that you make. So just something to keep in mind. But how do you get that game plan? Where do you start? What's the first step in the process? You give us a call. It's 844 935 36 Three, four. And again, if you have any questions whatsoever, please put them into the feed. We will go ahead and we will answer those for you. I will respond to you. You want to reach out to the office, please give us a call. You want to go to mortgagemomradio.com and send me a message. That's fantastic too. I love email. And download that phone app. Text the word mom to 36260. Get that phone app. It's just literally a wealth of tools at your fingertips. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Next week, we're going to be moving on. What's next week, Matt? Where are we at? Go to the next slide. Let's see what next week's, uh, let's give it a little preview. Ooh, loan programs. Next week, we're going to be talking about loan programs. We'll get into Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, the conventionals. We'll talk about some VA home loans, FHA, Jumbo, and USDA. And this one might actually take us two parts uh, because that is a lot of loan programs to talk about, but we are going to go through um, each loan program and what they mean, what do they do for you. And um, so make sure you've hit that subscribe button. Go to YouTube, search Mortgage Mom Radio, hit the subscribe button, click on that bell, make sure you've turned it on to all so you know when we upload the next video. You guys don't miss out. We're going to be bringing these to you once a week until we get all the way through the end of the process. You've got your keys in your hand. I hope you enjoyed it. Please click the like button on the video if you did like it, you enjoyed it, it gave you information that you didn't know, and we'll see you next week.